Hey guys and welcome to another video. This time I'm going to walk you through the installation and configuration of Warzone 2, the second installment of the most popular battle royale game of the moment. Make sure you watch the entire video as I'll pop some useful hints on setting up the game or fix potential issues along the way. Feel free to post any questions you may have in the video comments as I'm usually checking them and trying to help out gamers in need. Also don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel since I will post additional videos on how to fix game crashes and how to optimize the game and the PC for maximum FPS. Let's get to it. Open up your favorite browser and head over to the Call of Duty Warzone website. You can also find the link in the description. Scroll down a bit in the page and select Battle.net. Once you reach Battle.net page, just click on the Play for Free button. This will automatically start the download of the Battle.net client installer. Once it's downloaded, just open it up. If you're having trouble starting it up, go to the location you save it to, right click on the file and select Run as Administrator. When the installer launches, you can select the installation folder and whether you want Battle.net to be started every time your computer starts. Once you're happy with the selected options, just click on Continue. The download and installation of Battle.net will proceed. When Battle.net is downloaded, you will need to create an account. Just go ahead and create a free account if you don't have one, preferably using Google or Facebook account. I already have one set up, therefore I'll just log in. Make sure you also select the Keep Me Logged In option so you don't have to enter your password every time you open up Battle.net. Once you created your account and logged in, just go through the hints they throw at you and go for the Play for Free button on the Warzone 2.0 page. The game will ask you for your birthday just to make sure you are over 13 years of age. Next, it will tell you to add your postpaid phone number. Unfortunately for some of you, this step cannot be bypassed and you are also unable to use a prepaid phone card. The reason behind is that they just want to limit the number of hackers in the game. Adding your phone number is easy, just click on the add phone number button and it will take you directly to your Battle.net account webpage. Enter your phone number, provide the security code you received on your phone and you're good to go. In case your country code is not properly recognized, you might need to refresh the page or go to your account details page and update your address book. The proper country code should now be listed. Let's proceed with the installation now. Go back to the Battle.net and modify your settings as needed. The download size was about 25 gigs, which is kind of surprising since the Warzone 1 installation data was over 80-90 gigabytes. I already had Modern Warfare installed and that might be the reason why the file size is smaller in my case. Select a different folder if you are not happy with the default one and then press start install. The download of the game will start now. I was quite lucky to download the game at a time when not so many people were doing it, therefore I got a pretty good download speed. Some hints if this is not the case for you. First of all, try to stop all internet consuming apps both on your computer and in your home. Your sister watching Netflix or your brother playing an online game could affect your download speed. If you're certain it's the Battle.net servers, you can always try to pause the download, switch to another zone and resume it from there. I found this to be helpful when I installed Warzone 1. Just don't forget to set it back to your zone once it's finished. Once the installation is done, the game will start. If you haven't updated your GPU drivers in a while, then the game will give you an error and won't continue. Check out my other video on installing Nvidia drivers if you need to know how to do it. It even helps you figuring out what to do if the update fails. So now the game finally started. There will be several terms of use you will need to accept before actually launching the game for the first time. Select the appropriate brightness for your monitor, then choose the audio settings. I went for the headphones with the bass boost function enabled. We'll just skip over the next screens as I just want to walk you through all of the display and graphic options from within the game. Next you can choose a gamer tag as I already had a previous account, I already have one so feel free to set up one for your own. The two-factor authentication is a bit annoying but it's pretty important if you don't want your account to get hacked. Basically, if you enroll, every time you log into your account, Activision will send you a code to your email address and then you will need to enter this code in the game for them to verify it is actually you logging in. I encourage you to activate this function. As usual, before you reach the game itself, a restart of the game will be requested. Click on the restart and wait for a second, the game will launch itself again. 
Once you are past the intro, you will reach the main screen. Just select Warzone 2.0 and you will get to the Warzone's main screen. Now let's check all of those display and graphics settings. Click on the settings button, then select graphics. Within the display options, just make sure you have selected the full screen exclusive option. If you need to alt tab out of your game a lot, it would make sense to use the full screen borderless function. This option is also apparently helpful to avoid game crashes. For the frame rate, I would suggest that you lower the menu FPS as well as setting a frame rate just above your screen refresh rate. In my case, the screen refresh rate is 240 Hz, so the option doesn't really make sense for me as I will never get above 150 frames per second. If you have a 144 Hz screen, setting this to around 150 could help. Also, if you have a 120, set it to 130, and if you have a 60 Hz screen, just set it to around 80. If you're wondering why on earth would you want to set an FPS limit when everybody aims for maximum FPS, the reason is very simple. The refresh rate of your screen is a number of frames per second that your monitor can display. Even if your PC is capable of producing more FPS than the screen refresh rate, you should limit it. The GPU will actually produce those extra FPS, but you will not see it. This in turn consumes more power and can overheat your GPU, leading to thermal throttling. The reason you should set this rate above your screen refresh rate is because you want those frames to be ready when the display is also ready. Move over to the Quality tab and let's change the things a little bit. Click on Upscaling and select Fidelity FX CAS. Then click on the Show More button just below and increase the amount to 100. Anti-aliasing should be set to SMAA T2 time, the quality set to normal and the video memory scale to 85 or 90. Moving further down, the texture resolution goes to normal and the same goes for the anisotropic filter. The nearby level of detail is low, distant level remains on high, clutter draw distance should be set to long. Particle quality should be set to low and the quality level should go to very low. Bullet impact can be turned off unless you find it useful. Shader quality should be set to low, tessellation set it to off. Terrain I would keep it to max. On-demand texture streaming should be kept to off if your internet connection is not that good. Streaming quality should be anyway set to low. Volumetric quality goes to low, deferred physics quality should be set to off, and so is water caustics. The shadow map resolution should be set to very low or low, screen space shadows set it to off, spot shadow quality should be kept to medium or maybe high, spot cache is low and so is particle lightning. Both ambient occlusion and screen space reflection should be set to off, the static reflection quality is low, for NVIDIA Reflex set it to ON, but you can also try the ON plus boost option in case you are struggling to get sufficient FPS. All other options below should be set to OFF and film grain should be set to ZERO. Some more things before we finish. Move your mouse over to the left side and select the interface option. Scroll all the way down to telemetry and click on show more. I'm usually selecting the FPS counter, the server latency and the packet loss, but feel free to select any other options you want to track. As you select them, you will see them appear on the top left side of your screen. Now go check the audio settings again since Warzone added some extra settings in there. We already set the main audio options, it was headphones in my case, but you should scroll down to the voice options as well and select the desired one. More specifically, you may want to check if your voice comms are key activated, set the key bind for it and also enable or disable the newest feature of the game, the proximity chat. Using this, you can hear and speak to the enemy players around you within the game. That's it guys, if you're running into trouble or have any questions, feel free to comment and I'll try to help you out. A like and a sub are highly appreciated, have fun!